he's uh he's very particular about the set. Do you think he knows the show's already started? Have we started filming the show? Well, it's time for the Golf Kingdom, obviously. And we've got a fantastic show for you. Let's roll in the blueprint. We're gonna start off with a build it segment where I'm gonna use an ordinary household object to help you build a better game. After that, we're gonna go on the course. Yeah, we're gonna go out and I'm gonna throw myself into a bunker to help you improve your shots from the sand. After that, keep it simple, Strano, we're gonna use railroad themed kind of stuff to help you with your setup. Yeah, I've been working on the railroad to help your golf game. That's what we're gonna do in the KISS segment. Then we're gonna get down here to a new thing you're gonna to wanna to see for certain. It's deep thoughts. I've got one of the deepest thinkers in the game of golf. He's gonna share something really deep to help you. After that, it's top secret. It's our GIB segment. And as always, we're gonna close with a time to rise. Are you ready? Cause it's time to build here in the Golf Kingdom. The Golf Kingdom, brought to you by Accenture Insurance, tailor-made and executive air conditioning. Well, around your house, you've got a bunch of common objects to help you build a better game. And that's what we're about in the Golf Kingdom. We're about helping you find things that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe when you can't get to the golf course, to help you improve maybe your swing, your putting, or both. And I've got a great drill, or three drills in fact, to help you improve your swing and your putting at the end. So let's get to building your game here. Now, what's the common error I see? I'm gonna grab a golf club, and Daredevil, come to the big screen here. Let's talk about a couple common errors that we see in the golf swing. Number one common error is, as you swing back, the club doesn't move correctly. It may move like this, this elbow may wing out, and we struggle to work the club on the correct angle as we go back. Another common error is we see excessive leg action as we move. This knee will move too much, maybe the trail knee will move too much coming through, it'll move too much going back, so that's a common error. Another common error we see in putting is as you putt, you look up right away and your head moves too much. I'm gonna attack all three with a common household object that everybody should have. I hope everybody has at home, and it's a trash can. So hopefully you've got a trash can at home, and this is something we're gonna to use to help you with three drills here on the Golf Kingdom. And we're gonna start off by attacking that first thing, that thing I talked about where the club comes back and goes the wrong way, and your hands and arms don't move correctly. So the way you want to do it is just grab your trash can like this, very simple, and put some stuff in it. So I had the crew put some golf balls in here. Because what you want to do is, as you go back, the incorrect move would be to take the trash can back and go like this, where nothing comes out of it. That's that wrong move where the club's in a, in a weird spot and your arms are kind of stuck and this elbow's winging out. You want to go back and throw whatever is in the trash can behind you. So you want to hold the trash can like this, Put it down in front of you, and you want to go back and let the trash can turn and throw whatever is in the trash can out. It'll look like this, and everything will come. Well, wait a second. I said golf balls. These are, are vanilla-covered ding-dongs. Holy smokes. This is beautiful. It's going to be snack time in the golf kingdom here pretty, pretty soon. I love it. So put whatever you want in here, and as you go back, the correct move looks like this, where I'm dumping stuff out of the trash can. You can see my trail elbow gets in front of me, and I have the correct amount of arm rotation. Now, another thing you can do to fix leg action is take your trash can, put it down on the ground in front of you. Holy smokes, I'm really excited by the whole ding-dong thing here. I'm really distracted, but put the trash can down and straddle it with your legs. Now, when you swing, what you want to do is not knock the trash can around. I'll get set up. I've got, what have I got in my hand? I've got a pitching wedge in my hand, and I'm going to swing and not bump my legs in the trash can going back and through. I want to keep my legs nice and calm. I can have a little roll here, but as I go back, I'm going to try to not hit the trash can. I'm going to come through and try to not hit the trash can. It'll help you stabilize your legs. So I get set up, go back, calm legs, come through, calm legs, and turn around that trash can. It's a great way to help you calm excessive leg action in your swing. If you don't have a trash can at home and you go to the golf course to practice it, you want to take your trash can with you, 
You can use one of the range baskets and put it down there. Either way, it works real good at calming your leg action. Now, let's talk about helping putting and not looking up when you putt. So, get the club out of the way. I'm gonna take the, the hard hat off because the trash can. I don't wanna peek when I putt. I wanna keep my eyes still and looking down at the ball. So, I, I can't get the ding-dongs out of the way here. I'm kind of really, really thrilled about the whole ding-dong thing. Bring a couple golf balls in. Now, when you putt and look up, it makes you move in an incorrect way. We can't get our head moving, it affects our shoulders. So what you're gonna do simply is put the trash can on top of your head just like this. Get set up, so I'm gonna look, get myself set up, lower the trash can so I can't see. Now, I'm gonna hit a putt and I can't look. I can't see what happened. The trash can keeps me from peeking. So very simple, trash can over your head, let yourself get, oh heck, I made the putt too. That's how good this drill is. Get set up. Get your putter aimed, drop the trash can on your head, and hit a putt. Keeping your head still, it'll keep you from looking up. A trash can, it's a great way to practice three things in your game. Correct arm action going back, correct leg action, and not peeking when you putt. So put it to good use and lower your scores on the golf course. One of the toughest shots in golf is getting in the bunker, and I love getting out in the course and sharing stuff with you that helps your game. Join me out on the golf course in the sand, and I'm gonna give you a great tip to help your game. Well, one of the most aggravating shots in golf is the bunker shot, and it's one that almost everybody universally struggles with. Here's what stats tell us. The average 90 to 100 shooter, when you hit in the bunker, it takes you five shots to get the ball in the hole. That means in a par three, if you hit in the bunker, you're more apt to make a six instead of a four. Here's a simple thought in the bunker that'll help you get out every time. The one error I see when I'm working with your player that struggles to get out of the bunker is they never finish the front side of the swing. So they take a nice looking back swing and they come down and they kind of dump at the ball. So they kind of go like that and the ball doesn't go anywhere and the sand kind of gets to here and the ball never gets out. I want you to think about keeping your speed through the ball and finish somewhere up over here. Get your swing and the club through. Try to throw the sand a long way. It'll look like this, and the ball will come out every time. Finish, get through. Don't dump your follow through right here. Get your follow through coming through. Knock the sand a long way. If the sand goes a long way, the ball goes a long way. So here's the wrong way. Ball doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna back up a little bit, give myself some space since I made a mess. Here's the right way. We go through and the ball comes out every time. Think about that. Follow through. Keep your speed. The ball will get out and you'll stop making sixes on par threes and make more threes and fours. One of the key ways to take what you just learned to help your bunker play is to get out and practice. Grab your clubs, get out there, get in the bunker and hit some bunker shots applying what I just taught you and you'll find you'll get way more bunker shots up and down. Get ready for it. It's time for more myths and misconceptions of golf brought to you by my friends at Executive Air. That's why this is called It's Just Hot Air because it's stuff out there in the golf world that's got a little hot air attached to it. Now I've got a very famous golf quote I wanna talk about. Let's bring it up on the screen right now. The quote is by Sam Snead and he said, I hold the club as if it's a live bird. So he always said that I hold it like it's a live bird. So we hold a, a, a live bird in our hand. We hold it very softly because we don't want it to, to be squished in our hands. So we hold it very softly. So what's happened is we've had a generation of people that have gripped the club so light they can barely hold on to it. But there's more to this quote than just I hold it like a live bird. Let's check it out. He said, I hold the club as if it's a live bird with just enough pressure that the bird can't fly away but not so tightly that the bird can't breathe. There's more to it than holding it lightly. He holds it with just enough pressure. Now, gotta use your imagination. Imagine you've got a live bird in your hand, okay? You're gonna hold it tight enough that it can't get away, but not that you're gonna start crushing bones here. Very key thing. This golf club, when you get to the top of your swing, the forces and pressures on it make this thing weigh about 100 pounds up there. You have to hold it tightly. There's another thing that says, Hold it tightly with the last three fingers of your lead hand. Same thing, we have to hold it firm 
Not so tight that it's a live snake, but just tight enough that it's a live bird, we're not gonna crush it. Keep this in mind. We have to have a somewhat firm grip pressure to control the stick. This has been another myth and misconception of golf brought to you by my friends at Executive Air. They care for your air, so go check them out online at Executive Air. You want a golf tip that will really make this game easier? Okay, here's mine. The fastest way to get good is by finding a great coach. And the fastest way to find that person is through GolfChannelAcademy.com. It'll match you up with the best coaches in your area. And now you can even schedule a new student assessment. So, what are you waiting for? Schedule a training session with your local coach, Rob Strano, from Strano Golf Academy in Destin, Florida at StranoGolf.com. I love fitness, and I love our sponsor, PT Solutions, and we've got our own guru, Leanne, over there to help us with our golf game. What's going on, Leanne? Hey, Rob. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Well, I can't wait to see what you've got to help our players, because I know we're going to do something cool. What do you got? Okay, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about hip and shoulder disassociation. This is really important when you're doing moves such as chipping and putting. And I'm going to bring somebody in here to show you how it's done. So flex and rotating shoulders and hips independently. So let me show you how to do this at home. I want you to go up against the wall like you're being arrested. Okay, you've done that a time or two, haven't you? And you'll start rotating your hips while your shoulders are fixed. Okay, that's enough of that. Now turn around and you'll keep your hips still and rotate through your shoulders. And that'll help you start getting the motor control that you can do those without moving the other one. And so whether you're doing this with your hips fixed or your shoulders fixed, this will help you move, do these movements and help your chipping and putting game. And that's your Golf Kingdom fitness tip to help your game. Well, that was an amazing tip, but that guy looks familiar. He sure is darn handsome. And I'll tell you what, fitness is super important to that guy, to me, and to Leanne. And to get your fitness tips, be, be sure to visit PT Solutions online. I sure have seen a lot of golf swings in my life, and I've seen a lot of players warming up when I'm giving lessons at my academy. And one thing they universally struggle with is tempo. They don't know what speed to start back, they don't know what speed to transition and start down, and they make a mess of it, and they don't hit very many good quality shots. Well, we're gonna go on a little field trip here in studio, and I'm gonna show you something that you have in your home that will help you with your tempo. Come on, this is something really interesting, and you've got it, it's real simple. It's your refrigerator. This is a simple visual thought to help you get the speed right. Now, if I was hungry, I wouldn't go to the refrigerator and rip the door open like that. Whoa, oh my gosh, about four things almost fell out. If I'm, oh wait a second. There's my hard hat. I was wondering where that got off to. Thanks a bunch, crew. Okay, if I'm gonna open the refrigerator, I'm gonna open it smoothly because I don't want things to fly out. If you think about your back swing starting like you're opening the refrigerator, then you have good tempo starting back. Now I'm gonna explain the wrong move back in studio. Come on, let's go back in here and we're gonna check this out. So the refrigerator, that's a great way to think about it. But let's get back in here and talk about a wrong way. I see a lot of people start it like it's the beginning of ripping a lawnmower to start. No, we don't start like that. Remember, it's the refrigerator. We're not trying to start a lawnmower. Your backswing shouldn't start like it's a jerk. Now, Daredevil, let's go to the big screen here. I'm gonna grab a golf club and I'm gonna demonstrate it. This would be the refrigerator start back, right? Looks nice and smooth. I'm checking for a snack here late at night. I'm not ripping it back like that. I'm not starting the lawnmower. Now, there's a simple little mental drill you can do to help you feel good tempo back, good transition tempo, and then speed and impact. And it involves using your name. Well, maybe you can use your name. I can't use my name and I'll explain why, because I'm gonna pick Angelina Jolie's name to use. So here's the tempo thought. I'm gonna say her name when I swing and listen to how I do it. So it's gonna be Angelina Jolie. So see where I was fast? I was fast at the bottom. I was smooth. I drug out the Angelina Jolie. 
I can't use my name because it's got a B in the middle. It'd be Rob Strano. Sounds like I'm hitting speed bumps. No. So Angelina Jolie gets you fast at the bottom. So use your name or pick a name. That'll give you great tempo. Jack Nicholas's coach, Jack Grout, told him, Jack, I want you to start the swing back and start it down at the same speed. He started it back to, at, the, at one speed, came down the same speed, and had perfect tempo. That's a great thought that goes with our name drill and will help you have more solid contact with the golf ball every time. We go to great lengths here in the golf kingdom to help your game. And today, we've been working on the railroad to help figure out a way to get you to set up better. Daredevil, come to the big screen view here for me now. And I'm gonna talk about a question I had the other day in a, a lesson where I was working with a player on setup and they were aimed and twisted all crooked. And they actually said, I've heard about this railroad track thing at setup, but I don't understand it. I'm like, wow, the railroad track analogy has been around in golf forever as it relates to setting up to the golf, golf ball to hit a good shot. So I've kind of set that up here. We've got the train going to really drive home if you can focus on railroad tracks it can help you set up better. And I've got a big chunk of track here that I'm gonna show you. If I take this big chunk of track and point it at the camera, you can see the rails go off in the distance and they're parallel. The thing is, when they get way out of the distance, like at the horizon, it'll look like they come together at one point. But that's not what happens. They always stay parallel and apart. And that's the way you wanna think when you hit a golf ball. You wanna think this inside rail right here, that's your shoulders, your feet, your hips. The outside rail is your target line. That's where I'm gonna aim the club face. That's why I want the ball to launch on, kind of. So it's inside rail is your body, outside rail is your target line, and they look like two parallel pieces of track. Okay, now let's look at it here on the floor. I've put down my, my Bubba Sticks alignment sticks. You can see they're parallel here. When I get in here, I wanna set my feet so that my toes are equal distance from the stick, get my hips to match. Now you gotta watch out because we kind of get ourselves knocked out of alignment. That's why chiropractors have jobs to get us back in alignment. So use a club, get in there with your alignment stick, put this on your hip bones and see, okay, that's parallel there. Come up to your shoulders, okay, that's parallel there. Now bring the club down in front of you, get your setup and make sure as you look down, that club face is pointed down the outside rail of the track. My body's on the inside, my club face is on the outside. Now people ask me, how do I know if the club's pointed there? Well, if you have an alignment stick you're standing over here, the club face scoring lines will be perpendicular to your stick, so they'll make a 90 degree angle. So I get myself parallel to the inside stick, I get set up, and make my scoring lines perpendicular to the outside stick, and they're pointed right where I want to go. The railroad track analogy. Use that when you practice golf and set up. Put down two sticks or put down two clubs. Either way, it'll help you get lined up, and like we're working on the railroad, it's gonna work for you on the golf course. Drink. Alexa. Open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. If you want more Pro Pointers from me via your Amazon-enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day, I give you a new tip, free, with your Amazon-enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. This is former NBA player, Jason Jackson. It's time to bid on the golf kingdom. You know, golf's got a lot of deep thinkers in it. There's a lot of deep thought that goes into golf. Having been a, a player for a long time, I know a lot of these people. And you know what? There's one I think is a deeper thinker than all the others. And his name's David Ogren. He's one of the PJ Tour. He's played with Tiger Woods. And he has some very, very deep thoughts with David, 
that I'm going to share with you. Take it away, David Ogren. I watch a lot of young golfers, and I see a lot of good golf swings, 110 mile an hour swing speeds, good looking technique, looks great on V1. And then I was out at the golf course one day, 11 o'clock in the, in the morning, mind you, and there's this kid putting, and he's putting, and I sat there and watched him. This kid's gone on to play D1 golf, and it got me thinking about me and how I kind of got good. And I loved to putt. I would putt and putt and putt and putt. And so now as I'm looking around town trying to find that one person, I'm looking for the one kid that likes to go out there and putt. That's it. You gotta love to chip and putt, especially putt. Yeah, that kid in town that's always on the putting green, that's the one you want. You know, I told you he was a deep thinker. He's got the wheels turning now as I think about deep thoughts with David and what he just talked about. For more from David Ogren, go visit davidogren.com or if you're near San Antonio, Texas, drop in at his academy in New Brunfels and take a lesson from him. Welcome to GIB headquarters. I am Special Agent R. And this is the top secret stuff of golf that only the tour players know and I'm going to share with you. Yes, you're always wondering what we're talking about on the practice range when you're behind the ropes and we're up there on our own. We are sharing the top secret stuff of golf that you don't know that we know. And I'm here at GIB headquarters to share with you the stuff that only the best players in the world know. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about wedges and things you don't know about a wedge that we know as tour players. Let's get right down to it. What you don't know that we know about wedges is that when you set a wedge down and you have it square, the sweet spot of the club is the middle. A square club face, the sweet spot is in the middle. But when you open the face to hit a lob shot, or an open-faced little wedge spot, wedge shot, two things happen. And that's what we know here in GIB headquarters that I'm sharing with you. Square face, when you open it, two things happen. Number one is you create the ability to get more spin by clipping it off there. The second thing that happens when you open the face is the sweet spot moves out to the toe. I have the new high toe tailor-made wedge here and the grooves on the wedge go all the way out to the toe. There's no blank spot out over here anymore. And you know why that is? Once again, this is the top secret stuff. The reason why TaylorMade has the lines going all the way out here is because Dustin Johnson found that when he opened the face, he was actually hitting the ball out here where there were no grooves. So they extended the grooves out because when he opens it, the sweet spot moves out. Keep in mind, if you're opening the wedge, don't try to hit it in the center here. That's where you're probably shanking it from. Open it and expect to make your contact more out towards the toe. That's why when you look at a really, really great player's wedge, you'll have a wear mark from the center out towards the toe. You won't have that nice little dime spot in the middle. It'll go from here out to the toe. This has been what the tour players know from here in GIB headquarters. I'm Special Agent R. This is the top secret stuff of golf. Today, we talked wedges on how to get the sweet spot in the right place when you open the face. Okay, it is time to rise. And I've got something I really, really wanna share with you. It's really passionate to me. It's about the meritocracy of life and golf. Anything that is worthwhile is earned. It's never given to you. You think about that first car. If it was given to you, maybe it didn't have the value it did if you bought your first car because you were invested in it. Anytime you invest in something and put your passion into it and your life into it, it gets it a greater value. Let's talk about your golf game. Man, if you put hours and hours and hours of practice in, that's got value to it. You get what you earned out of it. 
you know, it's interesting in golf is the PGA Tour is still one of the few meritocracies in the world where, doggone it, you play good, you have some wins, you're going to get what you deserve. It's, there's no give on the PGA Tour. You're not given a free cut. You've got to earn it and get out there and do it. Same thing with life. Anything worthwhile, you got to go get it. you got to get after it. And that's where practice comes in. I always say when I see someone throw a club or I see someone get mad, that plays once a month and practices once, once a month. You really shouldn't have any reason to get angry because you haven't put in any time. You haven't earned the right to get mad. The guys in the PGA Tour that have put their blood, their sweat, their tears into it, they've ground on it. They've just been out there till their hands are bleeding. They've got the reason, the right to get mad. Everybody else, go have fun and play golf. Same thing in life. If you put your passion into your career and you're grinding on and working on it, tell you what, when you get there and you earn it, you've got the right to celebrate. And you know what? In the Strano family, you know how we celebrate? It's with a cookie cake. So go out there, get after it, earn it, and celebrate with a cookie cake. And I'll tell you what, send me the picture of you celebrating, and we may throw it on the Golf Kingdom. Well, thanks for joining me on the Golf Kingdom tonight. Hopefully we got your game back on track, and we dusted off a few things tips-wise to help you improve. Be sure to go follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. The clips from the show are out there, and you can see some behind-the-scenes stuff on social media and catch up with some scenes maybe you've missed out on YouTube. Also, if you have an Alexa-enabled device, ask Alexa to open the Golf Kingdom. Enable that device, and you can get a free tip from me every day to help your game. Thanks again for joining me on the Golf Kingdom. Okay, gosh, I've been waiting to do this the whole show. Y'all been eating my ding-dongs. I can't, mm. oh, that was so good. I love a good ding-dong. Mmm, yeah, oh, mmm. This is so good. Who doesn't like ding-dongs? I love ding-dongs. The Golf Kingdom. Brought to you by Accenture Insurance, tailor-made, and executive air conditioning.